What? What's up, Hog Mansion? Are you guys? Hey. Because you disrespecting me. Well, I don't fuck with you because you disrespecting me. I, I go hard because. Hey, y'all. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank y'all for joining me. Happy early Thanksgiving. I've been trying to go live all day, but it's been a lot going on. Can everybody see and hear me? Let me make sure y'all can see me. We got a good connection. I'm going to try and get this done under two hours so it doesn't freeze at the end and I get kicked out for YouTube. All right, y'all. All right. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So I know a lot of y'all are prepping for Thanksgiving dinner. I'm going to prep after this stream, but I wanted to go live because I'm like, okay, I feel a lot better than I did last week. Y'all know I had just, you know, I had been off for a week. I was sick and all that stuff. But I feel a lot better, so I was like, okay, I got to go live today before Thanksgiving. Talk to my peoples. I hope y'all are doing good. Chad, I am ready for Thanksgiving. We had Friendsgiving last weekend, so shout out to all my cousins and my peoples who came through. We had a really good time, so, you know, this Thursday's Thanksgiving. And I'm making my favorite seafood dressing. Um, y'all have seen me make that before. I have posted, I think, on Discord and on Instagram, my old Instagram page that Vlad got taken down. Fuck you, Vlad TV. Um, but I'm making that again this year, okay? And what else? I'm making my baked macaroni and cheese. Everybody loves that. I'm making sweet potatoes. So I'm about to, like, literally throw down tonight. I'm be up all night prepping and getting stuff together because y'all know I love to cook, so I'm super excited. Oh, y'all like the outfit and the hair? Thank y'all. I appreciate it. I'm trying not to lose any more weight. Um, I think I'm skinny enough, so I'm, I'm done. You know what I'm saying? I'm over my little diet. I'm definitely going to pig out, okay? Hope I can gain about five pounds. I'm definitely going to pig out this Thanksgiving, okay? But there is a lot to talk about. So before we even get into the stories, let me say this. I got a few announcements. Let me say this before we get into everything. Okay, y'all have been asking for years for the ugly Christmas sweater um, you know what I'm saying, with the little characters, so we got it, everything's ready, um, I'm gonna post the link in the chat, we're doing pre-orders, so if you want, you can get a crew neck or a black hoodie, um, we're doing pre-orders, the designs that, um, Honey Chama, aka Jennifer, came up with are super dope, I love this new character that we have, um, she's sipping Christmas, she's sipping tea all Christmas long, um, so you can pre-order, and then we're gonna ship everything out November 30th, so you will get everything in time for Christmas. This is the link. I will also have the link um, posted at the end of this live stream down below. So, but that's the link. If the mods could copy that and then paste it, um, you know, every so often so people see the link. But that is where you go get your ugly Christmas sweatshirts and hoodies. And they are adorable. Y'all know I love my little characters. And she did an awesome job. We worked on this. Um, you know, you know, a little sexy, a little, you know, a little spicy, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, still in the Christmas spirit. So now what else? What else? Okay, the teas. Um, forgive me for all of the tea drama. Y'all know I have my tea line on Amazon. A lot of stuff has been back ordered. Y'all know the economy is shady right now, honey. Y'all know the, the, the packages aren't packaging, the mail, you know, people have been, you know, boycotting and all types of stuff. So we've been having issues getting some of the teas. Um, I've heard from y'all, my male tea sippers who love my uh, men's tea. It is coming. I finally had a long conversation with my distributor uh, two days ago. So they said we're getting a bunch of our teas, the popular hair and nail tea. That is how I got my nails long and healthy like these. These are not fake nails. These are my real nails from drinking that tea. That's coming back. The skin tea is coming back. Um, the men's tea, uh, the wellness and digestion. So basically all of our popular teas will be back in the month of December. So just in time before it gets cold. They said everything should be at Amazon by December 4th. Fingers crossed, but we are getting them back in stock. So I'm really sorry things have not been in stock. I really apologize. Some of it was beyond my control, but, you know, they're saying that we're getting more shipments of stuff in, so we should be okay going forward. Um, so if you placed the order, I refunded everybody back their money who had placed the order because I didn't want to send you, like, partial stuff. I didn't want to send, like, two bags of tea if you ordered six bags, so I just refunded everything. So when everything comes in, I will let you guys know. Then you can just replace your order. So thank you guys for the support. I appreciate it. Yes, you know what I'm saying? One of the top black tea brands, okay, on Amazon. I appreciate y'all's support for real, for real. So now we can go ahead and get on to the stories, get on to the drama. So y'all come on in here. 
Now, I'm going to tell you like this. I literally went to the store. I was grocery shopping. And I come back and I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Everybody's being sued for sexual harassment. Like, literally, the lawsuits are pouring in, okay? And we're going to get to a lot of those lawsuits in a minute. But before we even get to the lawsuits and all the nonsense, um, we got to talk about all of this drama that is going on with Rod Wave. A lot of people have been wanting to know my opinion because y'all know I'm a big Rod Wave fan. I went to his concert here in the Twin Cities. Um, I just, I enjoy his music. You know, yes, you know, Rod Wave will have you in your feelings, will have you crying. But he's been getting caught out a lot by Lil Boosie. Lil Boosie's basically been calling out everybody who has been sampling his music. Uh, Lil Boosie is, well, I don't even think it's a threat. He's trying to take all of these rappers to court, including YG and others, but mainly Rod Wave, and people are upset. So you got the Rod Wave fans. They're going at Boosie. Let me go ahead and try and pull up this. I have so many pages up here. I'm trying to find all the... Lil Boosie and Rod Wave drama. So give me just a second. Let's see here. Like literally I have so many things pulled up here. Literally been going back and forth like the past two days. Where did that page go here? I just had it. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. Let me go back a little bit. Okay, so let me go ahead and share my screen. We're going to go ahead and listen to what Lil Boosie has to say about the situation uh, really quick. So give me just a moment. Okay. Here we go. So this was the, I'm going to show y'all the initial video here really quick. Y'all better do y'all research. Ride wave ain't the only one. I don't got paper on paperwork on the way. A lot of people, where it ain't just ride wave. Ain't it crazy? Cause all of them name it the same song. Nah, ain't in my feeling. I'm smiling. Ain't in my feeling. I ain't mad. I love when they do that. Shit. I ain't mad. When I hear people then took my shit and sang in my shit and put it on records, I be they giving me my flowers, you know. I be liking it when I hear it. It's just you got you gotta compensate me too. This is a business, you know. Just like you do everybody else. They supposed to reach out and be like, man, we need to get your writer share, your publishing on this record. We finna put out. <laughs> well, Ride right Wave ain't the only one. Okay. So this was the song. Okay. I can't play out loud. Heard that we can't play too much of it. Then you know people started dragging Boosie, so Boosie was like, "How's it foul? Is business?" And you know that you ain't go do that to no other major label without compensating them. They split. Why do it to a nigga you looked up to and you expect me to let you take my kids publishing? Get the f out of here! Stop playing victim, nigga. Um, you gonna go sample No Limit, Bad Boy, Cash Money, so so deaf, Michael Jackson, Marvin Gaye. I guess R. Kelly, Prince, word for word for free. No, at Rod Wave. Man, it got to stop, man. Man, you ain't got to sue no like me, man. I'm going to pull up. You talking about suing me? I hope that ain't what he said. Hey, bro, I'll pull up on you, bro. Tell me a number. Tell me a real number, though. <coughs> okay, the real number. Pull up and make sure you straight. Sue me. Man, it's... Okay, so basically Rod Wave is saying that he'll pull up to Boosie and just, you know, give him a bag, you know, drop him some money um, on the situation. There's another video because he's he's been kind of trending lately and he's getting really annoyed because y'all know Rod Wave for the most part keeps to himself. Let me find this other clip here. Give me just a second. Okay, so this was another one of Boosie. He was mad with YG. So let me, let me share this as well. <laughs> <laughs> Boosie is on a roll. So um, Boosie said he has another record. And basically, this one came out in 2014. YG dropped it. And um, so he's mad about this. No, VBS 
is on it. Okay, we can't play all the music, but basically if you go and you listen to it, they're playing YG's version and then Boosie's version. But again, this song has been out since 2014 and it's now 2023 going on 2024 and Boosie is looking for a payday. So now on top of that, people were calling out Rod Wave. Um, they're saying that he basically stole from Jay-Z. He stole like Jay-Z's whole lyrics. And so people were calling him out about that. And Rod Wave is also saying that um, he's not stealing from people. This is what people do in the music business. So let me go ahead and share this tab really quick here. In the middle. So in this clip, he's basically showing how Boosie himself also sampled Carl Sims. I don't even know who Carl Sims is, to be honest with y'all. But he's saying that, you know, Boosie's not original either. He's also sampling from people. But I'm sure that if Boosie sampled from him, most likely he got clearance for it. So after Rod Wave was getting drugged for um, stealing Jay-Z's lyrics bar for bar, this was his response here. So let me share this tab. So Rod Wave says, basically, fuck y'all, I did what I came to do, ain't no dropping shit else. Then he says, you bitches don't even fuck with me, speaking on me, mind your business, bitch. Okay, he's big mad. Then he says, I ain't never stole shit, five platinum albums, find you a hobby, nigga. <laughs> then he says, just cause you don't know about the original song don't mean I stole it, you, you dumb bitch. So basically, he's really mad. I've never seen Rod Wave like this. Like, I'm like, when I seen him cussing and going off, I had to clutch my invisible damn pearls. I'm like, uh-uh, y'all done pissed off Rod Wave. Because y'all know Rod Wave, he literally, he comes online, he drops his music, and then he runs away. Like, he does not, I don't know, he just doesn't really talk on social media. He just drops dope music, and then he disappears, which I like. He kind of gives me Beyonce vibes. Like, I'm just going to drop some shit, and that's it. You know what I mean? So he's out here cussing folks out. Yes, Kodak Black too. So, okay, so let me say this. So right now, Boosie's on the road, child. He got his time. Where is my tiny violin, bitch? Let me go ahead and open this up, okay? Boosie is on a hobo tiny violin tour, okay? Near, 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 near. So Boosie wants his paper, okay? He's going after Kodak Black. He's going after Rod Wave. Now he's going after YG. And so the internet streets, the hip hop streets are split. They're saying it's apparent that Boosie's broke. Them Vlad TV checks ain't checking how they used to, okay? Nobody cares about his opinion like that on Vlad TV. The views are dropping. So people are feeling like, you know, he has that huge mansion. Even if he paid it out right, he still has to, you know, pay for lights and heating and cooling. He got a whole bunch of damn children. So that's child support and mouths to, you know, to feed and shit. Um, so, you know, Boosie needs the money, okay? And I, I don't doubt that he needs the money. We all need the money. Hell, even YouTube is blocking ad blocker. Shit, YouTube said they need their checks, bitch. Y'all not gonna keep blocking ads. So they're getting rid of ad blocker on YouTube. So everybody needs their money. Every website you go on, they begging for money. They want you to turn off your ad blocker. They want you to pay for subscriptions. So everybody needs money, right? No shade. But I gotta keep it real. As much as Lil Boosie, you know, he gets on my nerves sometimes. He's not wrong in this instance. And this is me as a Rod Wave fan, okay? You can't take somebody's work and then just because you, you remix it and put your sauce on it, it's still their shit underneath all that lasagna, okay? Just because you pour a bunch of sauce on it does not mean that you didn't get the base of the lasagna from them. So, you know, unfortunately, Rod Wave, honey, okay, we love you, poo, but you're going to have to pay up. And you can't just drop him a bag because, again, this is talking about publishing, royalties. This is money that he can eat on indefinitely and his family can eat on indefinitely. If you just give him one lump sum, that doesn't mean anything. And let's also keep it real. Rod Wave is popping right now. And sadly, when you are popping, and he doesn't need antics. He doesn't have to pull a blue face in Krishan. He doesn't have to, you know, jump on social media and do all this stuff that we're used to, you know, SoundCloud rappers doing. He just drops his music and he keeps it moving. And so he's found a formula that works for him. His concerts are selling out. And I think, you know, the industry is feeling a way. People are feeling a way about Rod Wave. They feel like, you know, maybe he's a little bit too perfect. He doesn't beef. He kind of keeps to himself. So I think people are testing him. So now they're trying to, you know, comb through his lyrics. You know, social media is messy, honey. I said out of all the songs, 
Now y'all want to bring up that he took this verse from Jay-Z? Okay, all right. But either way, he has to pay. Let's not forget, uh, who was that? Who had all them, T-Pain. Remember when T-Pain had dropped that song, he was using all the people's samples. He was like using words that people say in their songs, like Little John and the East Side Boys. Um, I forgot what T-Pain song that was, if y'all could write in the chat. You know what I'm saying? I know I got brain fog. I can't think of the T-Pain song. Remember, all them different artists sued him because he was using like their slogans in the song. And so they all sued him, including uh, Little John sued him. And had to know to be in the shade room put, posting eyeballs and shit. <laughs> but yeah, when you use anybody's, you know, slogan, their, their beat, what they do, you know, their lyrics, you owe them some money. I, yes, it was buy you a drink. Thank you. If you, yep, snap your fingers. Two step. When he was saying all them words, everybody that he was shouting out, he thought he was shouting them out, but he was really saying words from their song. He got sued by every artist that he was so-called shouting out and buy you a drink. Literally every artist came for him. He posted about this maybe like a month ago. Also, Cisco, if y'all remember in Thong in, in Thong song, he said, Living La Vida Loca. Okay. That was a play on um, uh, Ricky Martin, Rick Martin, whatever, Ricky Martin. That was a play on his song, Living La Vida Loca. Ricky Martin, they sued him. And they were able to get a huge bag royalties off of the thong song. Ricky Martin gets just as much money from the thong song as, as Cisco does. You know, so you have to be really, really careful with that. Look at dusty ass P. Diddy. AKA Puffy, okay? Remember, I'll be missing you. It's kind of hard with you not around. Know you're in heaven, smiling down, watching us while we pray for you. Every day we pray for you, till the day we meet. He stopped that whole shit from Sting. The whole, he didn't change anything. Just ran to the studio and started rapping over Sting's, over Sting's entire beat, music, composition, everything. Do you know Dusty Diddy don't get no money from missing you? Faith don't get no money. Biggie's kids don't get no money. Sting gets all the money, all the publishing from I'll Be Missing You. Okay? So, yes, that is facts. He makes no money off of that song. Because, again, being lazy, and he was the king of sampling. They stayed sampling shit in the late 90s, honey. Everything was a damn sample. Y'all still sample, but it was really bad with Diddy and them. They was always sampling stuff. And it was so bad that when I would hear the original, I'd be like, oh, they took that from Biggie. And people were like, uh, no, that song came out in the 60s. I'm like, damn. You know what I mean? Like, that's how bad sampling was in the 90s. That we'd hear the originals and we'd, I wouldn't even know it was the original. I would assume that that was Biggie and Puffy's thing. But, um, yeah, so Sting got that money. So you have to be very, very careful when you're talking about the music industry. So even though a lot of y'all don't like Boosie, He's not lying in this instance. If this was, you know, Def Jam or a, major, or a major label, Rod Wave wouldn't have done that. He knows that he would have had to get clearance. But sometimes, you know, unfortunately, when we're independent, we think we can take from other people and it's supposed to be okay. And it's not. So, Rod, you know, we love you, Big Daddy, okay? We love you, but you're going to you're gonna have to run Boosie his money. He's not lying. Now, I do feel like Boosie, like I said, the money ain't money in. He ain't making what he was making on Vlad TV. So now he's trying to, I think he's literally right now on Apple Music, Googling his lyrics and seeing what pops up. Cause come on now, now you try to sue YG and that song came out in 2014. Now you wasn't tripping in 2014 when the money was good, but now you mad in 2023. So what's really the tea, Boosie? So I think that's what's going on. I think he's literally out here Googling his lyrics and seeing who has used his lyrics in a song so he can sue them. And he's definitely going to come after Kodak because him and Kodak been beefing and stuff. So it's going to be very interesting. Yes, I caught Rod Wave, Big Daddy, honey. <laughs> he just looks like a big old teddy bear, like you want to rub on his belly or something. I don't know. But yes, I mean, regardless, you know, Boosie's owed his money. So, you know, I can't. Y'all know me. I'm unbiased and I'm fair. And everybody was, you know, like, oh, I know you're a big Rod Wave fan. What do you think about this? I think Rod Wave is wrong. He should have got clearance, you know, and him just saying, oh, don't sue me. I'm going to just come bring you a bag. No, that's not how it works, brother. You got to run him a check indefinitely, okay? 
So yeah, he you got to run him his money. So hopefully Rod Wave will learn from this, you know, and understand that he needs to get clearance before he takes from other artists. You know, you got to, you know, you got to hook up these artists and stuff. But I do believe that y'all are hating Loki on Thick Daddy, okay? I do believe that there is a slight conspiracy. A lot of these rap dudes are feeling away. Because like I told y'all, you know, rap is dying right now. And it's on life support. And Rod Wave is doing good. He makes meaningful music. You know, he actually is lyrical. People really enjoy his music. And I think there's a little bit of hate, you know, going his way because he's doing good, you know? So, um, yeah. Yeah. Thick Daddy, you messed up, honey. You're going to have to cut that check, baby. <laughs> All right, we got over 5,000 people in here. Hope y'all are enjoying the stream so far, okay? Go ahead and hit that like button. Let me go ahead and read some of these super chats here. Um, let's see. I am Mandy T. Sent $20. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, sis. Uh, T. Shawnee Love sent $4.99. Says, hey, T. We love you. Hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you so much, and I hope you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving as well. Um, let's see here. Trixie Wilson sent five. Says, hey, Miss Highly Favored, you look cute tonight as always. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family, sis. Thank you for sharing with your tea sippers. Definitely, and thank you for coming through tonight. I appreciate you. Um, getting Lucky in T Kentucky sent $4.99. Says, child, let me dig into my couch and find some change to so." To show some support, thank you so much. I appreciate your support on this channel. It means the world to me, sis. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Tyler says, I love your channel. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much, Tyler. I appreciate you. Uh, Tyrell0320 says, I love the content, T. Thank you so much, Tyrell. I appreciate you. Um, Ivan sent $249. I think that's in Mexican money. Yes, it is. Says, hey T, showing love from Mexico. I want to give you a shout out. Oh, hold on, I want to give a shout out to my man, Trey Sean, for making him a tea sipper. Been listening to you since 2015. You got me through college and I have been taking your guidance. That is awesome. That is so fun. I have to like double read that because my nephew's name is Trey Sean. So I'm like, hold up. Don't tell me you date my nephew, honey. Okay. But no, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And thank you and your boyfriend for supporting my channel. But yeah, it is a lot going on. We are going to talk about some more stuff. So um, I also want to hit on this. So I didn't really understand why y'all didn't like that DDG or DVD, whatever the hell his name is. Um, Holly Bailey's, uh, I think that's her baby daddy. I think she's knocked up. But, you know, until she comes out and admits it, there's nothing I can do, right? So today, he, he took to the shade room to tell people to like unfollow and to leave bad reviews on this nail shop. He said that they were being racist um, after Holly came out with her story with her experience with the nail shop. So let me go ahead and pull this up here really quick. Like I said, I got a bunch of damn screens up. Where is the nail story? Okay. So this is it here. I'm trying to find his post where he was telling everybody to like give the nail shop bad reviews because people started dragging him as well for being messy. I don't see it on here. It was on here. They might have took it down. You know, Shade Room be removing stuff. I think Shade Room took it down because I'm not seeing it. But you can see it on the internet. He basically told everybody to go give this nail shop a bad review. So we're going to go ahead and watch what um, Holly has to say about the situation. This place. I'm like, well, come with me today to the place I've been telling you about. The Russian, Russian manicure, manicure place. place. Like, it's good, it's good. So we were excited to go. I set the appointment for 310, right? I called the lady back and I made sure I'm like, I'm gonna get there early. My sister has something right before, so she might be a few minutes late, is that okay? And she told me, of course, that's okay. You know, 15, 20 minutes late is okay. Mind you, I'm thinking the appointment is at 310. So I get there early, like at three, they start taking off my gel X, everything's going well, I'm getting excited. My 
sister's coming i'm like oh i can't wait for her to relax and everything have a good time too so i get there and immediately chloe just got back in town and the lady starts saying uh where's your sister you need to check her in da, 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 da. and i'm like oh she's on her way i told you like she was gonna be a few minutes late she's on her way though how long how long because she has we have back to backs back to backs mind you no one is in this place it's empty there's like one girl getting her nails done and no one else is in there but me i'm like okay she said she's like nine minutes away and then she like starts giving me faces like nine minutes isn't gonna work so i'm slowly but surely starting to get a little bit irritated because i'm like wait a minute like i have been a consistent customer here for the past few weeks I, I brought like them so many people my glam team goes there now to get their nails done like i have really brought them a lot of customers and i just can't believe the lady starts saying uh just take the benefit of the doubt and be like you know what this girl has been good like we can wait a few minutes but you're gonna have an attitude with me and try to so i'm starting to get upset and then me and the lady start going back and forth because after all i've been i've been a loyal customer and everything and you're mad about girl get minutes. to the point she keeps Shit, going this is a long ass story. So, i don't know if you guys know but if you go to these like it's like a russian it's a russian manicure place so their english is good but they're like kind of really um how do i explain it? they're really direct so sometimes some of the things that they say like comes off like it's being rude just because their tone of voice but other times i would just you know not really take it that seriously but this girl she was like literally she walked over to my chair and is arguing with me about this so at this point i'm really upset and we're going back and forth back and forth just take the benefit of the doubt and and then chloe walks in and she's like, I'm so sorry, but you're going to have to be kept. And I said, you know what? In the middle of my toes being taken off, I'm like, you know what? It's okay. We will just take our business elsewhere. And I get up, my feet still wet, my hands still all powdery. And I'm like, it's okay. Like, no worries. Because I'm not going to sit, let you tell me. Okay, I can't. I can't. I, I'm sorry, y'all. This is just, it's too, and then there's like literally like four more. I'm not clicking no more. It, it, the voice, her, she's just, she's boring. Sorry, let me come back on the screen. Boring as hell. Just this long ass, girl, get to the point. We went in. First of all, your sister was 35 minutes late. Let's start there, okay? It wasn't like she was 10 minutes late. She was 35 minutes late. And at that point, when you're that late, I have every right as a business owner to refuse services, okay? So I don't think she was wrong for that. Um, I found what DG, whatever, DBD, DVD. The East Coast family. Let me go ahead. Um, I found what he said, DDG. That is such a horrible acronym. Hold on. Let me pull this up. So I found the thing that he wrote that people were dragging him about. So let me share this tab. He tried to delete it, but we found it. So he wrote on here, he says, this place is racist towards black people. They kicked my girlfriend out while she was doing her nails. Please give them a one star. They don't deserve the business. And so a lot of people were really mad about this. And they were saying like, this dude is really messy. He's not good for her brand. Why would you tell, you know, a bunch of strangers to go one star this business? You know, you don't, it's the holidays. Um, everybody's out here struggling. Even if she received bad service, you guys have a huge social media following. You guys don't need to do that. So she ended up coming on that post and people started dragging her on the post, but this is what she wrote. Let me pull this up really quick. Okay. So after her long story, she wrote this on that same post and she says this. She says, y'all, it's not that serious. I was explaining my day on Snapchat. I did not name any names. We went to another salon and still got our nails done beautifully, LOL. Everyone be nice to everyone and calm down about some nails, please. Again, this is my issue. Your man rallied the troops, okay? We didn't, 
we didn't go because of your story because I couldn't even get through her story. It was just too long and I just, you know, the voice, she sounded like she's a kindergartner. I'm not interested in the story any longer. I just kind of checked out. Yeah, the average person who listened to your story did not go to go give them a one-star Yelp review. Your man sat there and told people to go do this. So that post will be should be towards your man, towards your baby daddy. That's who that post should be towards and not necessarily the fans because they're following suit into what he asked them to do. And I just don't think that's right. Even if she had a bad experience, she has the right to leave a one-star Yelp review if she wants to because it was her experience. But for people who never went there, they shouldn't be doing that because you can literally ruin a business that way. If you've never walked into the business, you've never had an experience with the business, then you shouldn't be one star in businesses just because your favorite celebrity had a bad experience. That's on them. If they had a bad experience, then you know never to go back and leave them a bad Yelp review. But you shouldn't be doing that, you know, because again, her experience may not be everybody else's experience. And honestly, if I owned a nail shop and you're waltzing in 35 minutes late, I'm not doing your nails. Because a lot of times when you're that late, there's another customer. So a lot of times they'll be working on another customer or they'll have to push back an appointment. So, you know, some of these celebrities need to stop acting so entitled. And I'm not saying that they were necessarily acting entitled, but for her sister to be that late and for her to think that, oh, it's okay, you know, she's late, but I called in advance. Yeah, they might have gave you a grace period of, you know, five to 10 minutes, but anything over 10 minutes, everybody knows appointments get canceled and rebooked, you know, for the most part. So... I don't think that was cool for him to do that. Um, I don't think it was a good look at all. Oh, snaps. Moneybag Mo's in the building. So Moneybag Mo just came through and she dropped, once again, $399.99. Moneybag Mo, thank you so much. I'm still waiting for an email from you. I would love to send you um, an ugly Christmas sweater. Um, they go on sale um, pre-orders. I would love to get you one and send you that out in a, you know, like a, a like a lovely tea gift basket. Because at this point, Mo is like the number one tea sipper on here. She's always coming through, dropping damn near $400, might as well say $400 super chats. I really, really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart because you don't have to. You do it because you want to. So thank you so much for the support. It means so much to me. And... Also, let me address this, because I noticed there be a lot of dusties in my comment section, like grown men who get mad that I get super chats. What are y'all mad at? I literally sit here and I do commentary. I have fun with my subscribers, and y'all get mad that people send me super chats, but y'all same dudes will sit on OnlyFans and trick off on girls that y'all can't fuck. So wh wh why, what are you really mad about? Are you mad because I can sit up here and people support me and I can keep my clothes on and I can use my brain? Because I don't understand why guys sit in my comments and get mad that I get super chat. Yeah, I, I would never send her no super chat. Dusty, I didn't ask you to send me anything. I provide free content. If people feel the need to send a super chat, I am more than grateful. It's very humbling and it means a lot to me because guess what? My last live stream that I did, it was demonetized. I'm not making no money off my, my, off my last live stream, but my super chats definitely help to offset that. So I appreciate everybody who supports me. I don't care if you're sending $400 like Miss Monique, because I really appreciate money bag more, Mo, or if you're sending a dollar. It still means a lot because you don't have to do it, and I really appreciate it. So I just hate when I see guys in the comments like getting mad that I get super chats. It's like as a woman, we can't win. If I'm up here stripping and taking off my clothes, then I'm a hoe who's doing stuff for money. If I sit here and just be cute and talk, then, oh, she shouldn't be getting no money. She ain't doing shit. It ain't like she's, you know, shaking her ass. Ask, what y'all giving her money for? Dusty, why are you mad? Why are you mad right now? Go create your own live stream and hope that people send you money. Like, I never understand that. Like, dudes who do that, I just block them because it's weird. Because why are you watching me if that's what you're upset about? I do a two-hour stream and you're mad because somebody sent me a super chat. So, so money bag Mo, you got these dudes and they feelings, honey. Okay, you really do. They be really pissed off like, I can't believe somebody sent her $400. I'm like, but why are you mad though? Like, what are you mad about? I don't sit here and beg. You guys have never seen me be like, oh, if y'all don't send me no money, I'm not about to do a stream. I'm about to just sit here and stare at y'all. I've seen YouTubers do that. Where they'll be like, well, nobody's sending me money, so I'm about to just sit here with my arms crossed. I don't do that. I still keep on with the show. 
So please stop leaving comments. You know what I'm saying? Because all you're doing is projecting your damn insecurities onto me. Because like I said, if I was on here taking it all off, y'all had something to say about that. I'm on here not doing that and y'all still got something to say. So shout out to my supporters. I appreciate y'all. I really do. So thank you so much. Um, let me see here. I got a few more super chats coming in. Um, Brittany sent 9.99 says, hey T, it's my 33rd birthday. I hope you enjoy your turkey day. Happy birthday, Brittany. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope you have a wonderful birthday. So thank you. Um, Nia sent 19.99 says, thank you for blessing us with a live on Thanksgiving Eve. What a way to prep my dinner. You're the best. Definitely. And thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Solange. Oh, we got another Solange. Okay. Um, sent 199 says, Hey T, happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your day. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, sis. Um, Jay McCullough. Ooh, hold on. The page refreshed. Okay, he said 999. He says, I thought DDG didn't believe racism existed. What? Happy Thanksgiving. You look amazing. When I'm late, I call and let you know and reschedule or wait for the next availability. I definitely agree. Oh, I didn't know that DDG was one of those. that he So he doesn't believe in racism until it affects him and his girlfriend. Interesting. I didn't know that because I got to tell you, I don't follow them. I just feel like they're just, I don't care enough about their relationship. They're, they're too young for me to be like, oh my gosh, I need to know everything that's going on with them. No, absolutely not. But yeah, I didn't know he was one of those. That's very interesting. So now he wants to pull the racism card when it's affecting his girlfriend, but when it's regular black folks, there's no racism. Okay, we see you, DVD. <laughs> I need to learn that boy name, honey. Okay, so we gotta talk about, okay, so before we talk about that, let me talk about Young Miami, okay? So as we know, Young Miami has been very quiet. We've been seeing her with her kids lately. She took her kids to the Miami Dolphins game. Um, the other day she was having a Friendsgiving dinner, but strangely enough, she hasn't said anything about, you know, her, her poppy, AKA Diddy, you know, she was holding up that sign at the BET Awards, honey, letting everybody know that's her man, you know, my man, my man, my man. Um, but she's been real quiet about her man lately. Remember she was, you know, beefing with the Asian girls online and, you know, being real racist towards the Asian girls and, and calling them munches and jump offs and everything else. She's been very, very quiet about this Cassie situation. So um, DJ Academics was calling out Carisha. You know, he's been keeping his foot on the whole crew over there. So they, they had a whole back and forth. So we're going to go ahead and um, look at their back and forth really quick here. Let me find this. Like I said, I got a lot of damn screens up, child. I'm still laughing at Rod Wave cussing out the whole internet. Okay, hold on. Where is it at? Okay, here we go. Let me share this tab real quick. All right. So, messy-ass DJ Academics wrote this. He said, Young Miami... Loud ass, hold on. Loud my wait, young Miami's loud ass ain't tweeting four days. <laughs> Come on, don't make it obvious. LOL. <laughs> I'm sorry, I agree with DJ Academics, okay? You know, she always got something to say about everybody else, but when it comes to Papa Diddy, she's quiet than a motherfucker. Okay, let's keep that real. So then somebody went to her comment section because she's been posting everything but the Diddy situation. And somebody says, you ain't learning from Cassie's sister. <laughs> so young Miami replies back and she says, I think you're under the wrong bitch page. Laugh my ass off. <laughs> so basically she's still showing her allegiance to Papa Diddy, okay? She says she gonna stand by her man. She don't care if he's out here ring girls and, you know, whooping their ass and giving them chin checks. She says she from Miami, bitch, and she will fight Diddy back. Plus, I think, you know, Diddy's old now. You know, he he's not as, I'm not saying he's not strong, but, you know, you know, as you get older, you you know, your knees ain't working right and shit. <laughs> you know, the wrist ain't working right. He can't, he can't, he probably can't, you know, hit on Miami the way he was hitting on Cassie in his younger days. You know, you know, motherfuckers old and shit. You know, they want to calm down and, you know, not be as vicious. So maybe she's getting like, you know, the tail end of Diddy where he's not really knocking heads anymore like he was back in the day and shit when he was younger. 
you know, breaking noses and knocking out teeth and shit. So maybe she got that old Diddy. He, you know, he can't run too fast anymore. He's like, well, damn it, she's fucking up. Oh, well, you know, ain't nothing I can do. But um, I think the whole situation is a mess at the end of the day. Um, did I expect her to come out with a statement? Not really, you know, but I also, you know, her clapping back at the fans. People had the right to be worried about you. People had the right to be like, you know, to send smoke signals and tell your ass to run, bitch, run. Um, people have the right to do that. So for you to get mad and say, you know, you're under the wrong post, no, she's under the right post because you're the only one still sucking his peen, okay? So the person posted under the right post. Cassie's no longer fucking with him. Cassie got herself a fine husband and two children. So the person addressed the correct woman, okay? Because you're the only one still claiming Papa Diddy, okay? So I find this whole situation just, you know, just... You know, it's, it's a key key. So now in other news concerning Papa Diddy, you know, we all seen the stressed out picture of him. You know, he's holding his stomach and shit, you know, holding his head, you know, just, you know, stress. You know, we saw his photo op. He's walking around with his sweatpants tucked in his socks. <laughs> I can't laugh because I'd be like that around my house. I tuck my, my pants, my sweatpants or my leggings. I tuck them in my socks. You know, I don't know if it's something with age. It just, it's, it's a comfort thing. <laughs> <laughs> I am looking like a damn wrestler and shit. <laughs> so, you know, he, he's stressed. It's a comfort thing. You, you tuck your sweatpants and your socks and shit. It keeps you warm. It's, it's, so it's just me and Diddy who do that? Y'all don't do that? Y'all don't tuck y'all's pants and y'all socks? <laughs> when I seen that, I fell out because I'm literally doing the podcast with Emily. Like, I put this on everything. That's how my pants look right now. They're tucked into my socks. <laughs> Am I the only one who does that? Somebody said I'm 28 and I do it too. Okay, so it's not an old people thing. Because I do it now. I don't know. I do it a lot now. So young people do it too? Okay, good. I'm glad it's not just me. Because I do. When I said that, I was like, oh shit, it's not just me. I thought I was the only weirdo who walks around here with my pants tucked in my socks. <laughs> I'm going to post y'all a picture of me doing that one day. Y'all going to crack up. I'll be looking like I got gout. Because you know I got skinny legs and shit. Then all you see is these thick ass pants and socks. I'm like, what the hell's going on with your ankles? You got gout? And I'm like, no, it's my pants that are tucked into my socks. <laughs> but anyways, child, Papa Diddy is having the worst day ever. And guess what? I'm here for it, okay? Not only did he run to go settle with Cassie, you know, which was basically admitting his guilt to me in my eyes, but um, he's just gotten a bunch of bad news today. And I'm here for it. So let's go ahead and watch what's going on with Diddy here. Let me pull up my screen. I got so many damn pages. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Let me share this with y'all real quick. Okay. So right now. <laughs> okay. So right now, this is what's going on with Diddy. Um, his clothing brand, y'all remember Sean John back in the day and my, 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 uh, oldest son, he had Sean in his name. I mean, when he was young, we'd be like, oh, you know, this is your, you know, they made this for you. Cause you know, he had Sean in his name. So we would get him Sean John and stuff. We'd be like, oh, they made these clothes for you, Sean. He's grown now. So he knows that this is, you know, they weren't made for him, that this, this is Diddy's clothing line. You know, as a, as a young person in the you know, 90s and 2000s, we supported Diddy. You know, we, we bought Sean John. You know, we supported this black man's clothing company. But again, that was in the early 2000s. Who the fuck is wearing Sean John in 2023? Like, put a teacup if you're still out here wearing Sean John. I didn't even know Sean John was a thing. I'm like, what year is this, 2003? So anyways, uh, Macy's, they done came out and made this huge announcement, honey. This is some messy shit. So Macy's came out and they basically said this. Diddy's clothing brand, Sean John, <laughs> will no longer be carried in Macy's. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to read this. It will no longer be carried in Macy's with the insider connected to... <laughs> Like, who, who woke up today? 
on Thanksgiving Eve was like, I wonder if Macy's going to get rid of the Sean John clothing collection. <laughs> what? <laughs> so anyways, they done contacted somebody from Radar Online done contacted an insider and they learned exclusively, okay, that the rapper's label would not be available on the department store website effective this month. <laughs> Once again, who is wearing Sean John in 2023? That's all I want to know, okay? Then they're going to say Sean John is offered on Macy. <laughs> I can't even read the rest of this shit. Sean John is offered on Macy's website in select stores, but our sources shared that the corporate um, has been evaluating the brand. <laughs> brand for a while now and nothing has been selling like it used to since the 90s oh my gosh i'm literally crying <laughs> oh my god as a part of an ongoing review of our brand's portfolio the sean john collection has started to phase out of assortment since early fall 2023 the well-connected source told radar online Okay, so now if that's not bad enough, okay, at least Sean John, that's old. Oh, so there was there's a few people who still wear Sean John. I see some teacups. I'm giving y'all the side eye because I didn't even know you could even buy Sean John, okay? That's like me out here wearing baby fat and rock -aware. Remember how every rapper had a clothing brand in the early 2000s and the 99s? So anyhow... Um, this is what else is going on with Diddy. So on top of him being dropped by Sean John, you know, calling me surprised. Well, now y'all know this liar. For years, we thought he was like, you know, this mogul. He owns Ciroc. You know, everybody wanted to be, you know, an entrepreneur and a mogul like Diddy. You know, we thought that he owned Ciroc. Only to find out that he's nothing but a glorified influencer. He's no different than me and any other influencer on social media. He's a glorified influencer. He didn't own these brands. He was just the face of these brands. And Diageo, y'all not always mispronounce it. They're the, you know, they're the ones who own it. So now that all this has come out, they really want to separate themselves. So both, both of this news hit today on Papa Diddy. So Diageo cites Diddy's R claims. Um in renewed push to keep him out of tequila ads. <laughs> so now they don't even want him in the tequila ads, even the old ads, they're, they're pulling them off the air. So it's a lot going on with him. So let me see here. They also wrote that last week, Sean Diddy Combs is facing growing scrutiny and missed the push to refresh and expand a business portfolio that he spent decades cultivating. A letter filed with the New York court Friday, the London-based spirit maker Diageo cited that the accusations to bolster its month-long effort to prevent Combs from serving as the face of daily-owned tequila, which has ran in joint venture uh, for over a decade. So basically, <clears throat> the whole daily owned remember when he lied and said that Warner Brothers didn't want him to be the Joker? And they were like trying to take that from him. But the real reason why they didn't want him using the Joker um, costume is because he shot that whole De Leon tequila commercial in the Joker costume. And so that's why he got that cease and desist. So basically, as I stated in that last stream when I talked about this, he didn't own that liquor brand. Um, Diageo owned it. So now they want him, they want his face off of all the advertising. They don't want to have anything to do with him. So this whole situation with Cassie is definitely snowballing. It's definitely going to cost him a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it, it's hard times for Diddy. And I don't feel bad for him because he's done so much to people. It's, it's terrible, all the stuff that he's done. So now on top of that, um, <laughs> oh, yeah, somebody said this on that post. I was cracking up. Um, I think they have. They had set this on DJ Academics post about the whole Sean John thing. Let me see if I can find it. They were basically like, if you're still wearing Sean John. Okay, this is it. Let me show y'all this. This had me cracking up. 
So this person, hold on, hold on. Let me share this tab here. He said, anybody still wearing Sean John in 2023 needs to be included in the lawsuit. I fell out when I read that because I'm really trying to figure out who is still out here wearing Sean John. But I guess there's two people in the chat who are out here wearing Sean John. I'm going to need y'all to retire Sean John. Sean John is a wrap. Retire it, okay? So now on top of this, um, like I told y'all, I went grocery shopping and I literally came home. And there, there have been so many lawsuits filed literally in the past three hours. So grab y'all's teacups because this is a lot of breaking news um, that has literally popped off. So let's start with this. Um, Jamie Foxx is being sued for sexual assault, y'all. Let me share my screen. Give me just a second here. This is insane because Jamie Foxx was just laid up in a coma, damn near died, and now they're saying he done sexually assaulted somebody. So let me go ahead and um, read this to y'all. Give me just a second here. So they are saying... It happened in 2015. So they're saying Jamie is being accused of sexually assaulting a woman in New York in 2015. According to the lawsuit obtained by TMZ, the Oscar winner was at a Catch NYC roof in August of that year when the plaintiff arrived around 11 p.m. A few hours later, the unnamed woman and one of her friends who were seated one table away from Jamie Foxx allegedly asked the actor for a photo which she claimed that he agreed to. She claimed that the 55-year-old seemed intoxicated and allegedly replied, sure, baby, anything for you. After taking a few photos, the woman alleged that Jamie Foxx told her that she had a supermodel body and smelled so good. The plaintiff claims that the actor then pulled her by the arm to the back area of the roof and allegedly started touching her inappropriately. She alleges that Fox placed both hands on her waist and then moved them under her top to rub her breast. Damn. The woman claims that there were several people, including some security guards, that witnessed the alleged assault, but they simply walked away despite seeing her trying to get away from the race star. Fox then allegedly slid his hands into her pants and put his fingers inside her vagina and anus. On the roof in front of people? I'm reading this. This is breaking news. I don't even, I just seen that he was, you know what I'm saying, sued. I don't know the details, so we're reading this together. She claims that the alleged assault stopped once her friend came around the corner and saw what was going on. The plaintiff is suing Jamie and the restaurant for, cons for compensatory and punitive damages claiming she had to undergo medical treatment and suffered emotional distress as a result of the sexual assault, abuse, assault, and battery. The New York Adult Survivors Act, which allows alleged victims of sexual offense in which the statute of limitation had lapsed to file a civil suit, is notably up on November 24th. Reps for Jamie Foxx did not immediately return our request for comments. Child. That's a lot to digest. Hollywood is so messy, but if that's not bad enough, he's not the only one being sued. Okay? So... Somebody who was very close to P. Diddy. Y'all remember him from making of the band? That bald head man from making of the band, Harvey? He's being sued. So let me pull this up. I know all the 90s and 2000s kids. Y'all remember him. Because he used to be snapping on them band people too. Oh yeah, and L.A. Reid. L.A. Reid is another one. But he, he, he got his lawsuits a few months ago. All of these just popped up today. So these are all just from today, the past like three hours since I went grocery shopping. All these folks have been sued. So this is um, the former bad boy president and label sued for sexual assault and negligence. So this is what they're saying here. Um, Harvey Pierre is being sued for allegedly grooming and sexually assaulting his assistant, 
just weeks after Cassie accused Diddy of the R word and sex trafficking. According to the plaintiff's lawsuit, Pierre allegedly preyed on his assistant on multiple occasions in New York City and other locations throughout the country and used his portion of authority, and sorry, used his position of authority as the plaintiff's boss to groom, exploit, and sexually assault her. In the span of a year, Pierre had allegedly engaged in a pattern of grooming his assistants, which eventually led to sexual harassment and assault. The assistant is now looking for damages that will fully and fairly compensate her. Ooh, wait. Oh, Cassie done opened up a can of worms, honey. Okay. Uh, the Bad Boys Entertainment, Bad Boy Records, and Combs Enterprise are also named in the lawsuit. Wow. As co-defendants and are accused of negligence and gender violence. Wow. According to the filing, the defendants knew that Pierre was unfit to be in a high level position <laughs> and failed to properly supervise him. Oh, what a rains it pours on Papa Diddy's head. These victims are not playing. What did I say in the podcast? I said Cassie done opened up a can of worms. Everybody who has been victimized by Diddy, okay, they're going to be coming out the woodwork. The fact that he settled a nine-figure settlement with Cassie, oh, they want their coins. They want their money too. And so um, at this point, I believe it. Because the way he ran to settle, I believe there was a lot of messed up stuff that was going on at Bad Boy. And like I always tell y'all, right? I don't care if it's in sports, if it's in business, attitude reflects leadership, okay? Attitude reflects leadership. So if the, the head is rotten and the head honcho's out here harassing people, putting hands on people, okay? Aring girls doing all this sexual deviant shit, it breeds a culture for everybody up under him. If the boss has no integrity and doesn't know how to handle himself as a boss and doesn't know how to handle his sexual exploits in a proper way, that's breeding grounds for like that culture to, to be pervasive in that type of environment. So you'll end up finding the executives, the bosses, even lower level people who have a little bit of power abusing people underneath them. So I, I don't think this person is even lying. I'm waiting for more tea to come out to find out what all he did. We need details, okay? Did you get punched in the forehead too? You know, we need more details, but yeah, attitude reflects leadership. So I'm not surprised, I would not be surprised if more people from Bad Boy, okay? Record labeling crew in my Tupac voice get pulled into more lawsuits, okay? I hope, you know, I hope the children behave themselves. But then again, Papa Diddy and Justin were sharing girlfriends. Remember, they were passing Lori Harvey around. So hopefully the kids aren't involved in no fuckery either because the kids are grown. You know, I keep looking at them as kids, but, you know, Quincy and... um. Tristan and Justin, they're damn well. Quincy and Trish, uh, Quincy and Justin are definitely in their thirties. I think Tristan is like twenty five ish. So hopefully they didn't take on, you know, what I'm saying, or is his name Christian? Y'all know I always forget that little boy name. I think it's Christian. Um, hopefully they didn't take on none of their daddy's traits and the things that went on at Bad Boys, because I would hate for you know lawsuits to be popping up against them as well. I haven't heard anything, don't get me wrong, but I would hate for that. Cause I'm sure the kids are going through enough with what their dad is being alleged to have done to people and to their mother as well. Even though, you know, Kim is not Justin's mother, you know, she still played a motherly role, you know, they're all brothers, you know, so it's just really sad. Yeah, it's Christian, right? Thank you, I always mix up his name. King Combs, I'll just call him King Combs. Well, yeah, man. Now, Harvey Pierre and Jamie Foxx are not the only ones. There's another guy. Now, y'all know I'm a Real Housewives of Atlanta, Real Housewives of New Jersey fan. I'm not really into the Beverly Hills people. 
Um, I'm I'm team Atlanta, Potomac, and Jersey. But right now, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is going on, and there's a new black person on there. <laughs> new black person. Because on the Beverly Hills show, they don't have a lot. Of, well, I think she's black. Maybe she's, in, I don't know. Maybe she's mixed. I don't know. But there's another, you know, person of color on there. Because this is the franchise with the older white women. So the newcomer, Anne-Marie Wiley, her husband, Marcellus, is being accused of a rape in 1994. This is crazy. I had to think back, like, 1994, I was, like, in junior high or some shit. Like, what is going on now, you know, that people are suing from, like, 20 years ago. So this is what's going on with this dude. And they just got here. I never heard of Anna Marie or her husband. So we're going to go ahead and read this. This was filed recently, today. So the husband of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills newcomer, Anna Marie Wiley, has been accused of the R word in a new lawsuit. I hate the fact we can't just say certain words, but the algorithm. Um, a student who attended Columbia University at the time as Marcellus Wiley nearly three decades ago sued him Tuesday in New York. So, ooh, New York has really set a precedence. You notice everybody's running to file lawsuits in New York because come the 24th, you're not gonna be able to file anything. So she went to the New York Supreme Court under the Adult Survivors Act, alleging that he attacked her in the fall of 1994 when he was a sophomore and a star football player. According to the lawsuit, which was obtained by the Post, Marcellus allegedly forced himself on the woman in her freshman dorm room. The woman alleged that Marcellus, who's now 48, ignored her verbal um, objections and took her virginity, oh my gosh, which she claimed later drove her to attempt the S word. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. Wiley's actions were intentionally designed to cause the plaintiff severe emotional distress or were taken with reckless regard to the significant and or substantial probability of causing the plaintiff severe emotional distress, her lawsuit claims. The woman, a professor of sociology with the focus on race and culture, claimed that she and Marcellus were friends when he invited himself into her dorm room and allegedly telling her that he wanted to eat dinner together and listen to music. She allegedly told Marcellus that she was a virgin and not interested in having sex with him, but she claimed that he laughed in response and said, ain't nobody trying to have sex with no virgin. Don't worry, I got you. Just coming to hang out while I eat, I don't even have condoms on me. However, the woman alleged that the 250 pound athlete, damn, that's a big boy, almost immediately ripped off her clothes when he got there and forced her face down onto the mattress. Oh my God. She claimed that she could barely breathe and feared for her life as Marcellus allegedly arred her multiple times, according to her lawsuit. She managed to get away from Marcellus, but he allegedly verbally threatened and physically yanked her back into the bed for another round. The woman says she confided in a friend over the alleged attack and then reported it to a series of Columbia University administrators, all of whom allegedly displayed fondness for the NFL hopeful. Mm. One of the administrators allegedly showed the woman's victim statement to Marcellus, who just disregarded it, who disregarded that it's the R word. The woman also claimed that the administrator told her that she had misunderstood the encounter because she was born in Africa and Marcellus was an American and people from different cultures interpret things differently. Marcellus received minimal punishment. He was placed on academic probation and ordered to complete the spring 1995 semester from his home in Los Angeles. He then returned to New York City's campus and the team. The woman and the friend who encouraged her to report the incident allegedly received harassing phone calls in the months that followed. In the spring of 1996, the woman said that she tried to end her life, which after which she admitted to she admitted to being locked in the hospital ward for two weeks before being released. She claimed that she and Marcellus were later forced to share classes together. The woman later became active in the university chapter of Take Back Night, an organization that focused on ending sexual relationships and domestic violence when she allegedly met other women who claimed that they were arred by the same man. 
The Col Columbia was named in her lawsuit over the allegations of neg of negligence, neg uh, I can't even say the word negligence and reckless failure to protect the student from sexual predators. Wow. Mm. It is getting real out here. So people are not playing. People are having flashbacks and old memories, and you know they're you know they're racking up the lawsuits. Obviously, something happened because the university was involved. He was suspended for a while. Um, and then to see him on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, I'm sure that let her know that he has money. He's doing pretty good. And um, she's going after that civil suit. Very interesting. And I mean, it really does happen. Like, it's not, I don't take what she's, take, what she's saying for granted at all. Stuff like that happens every day. Not just in the dorm rooms, you know what I'm saying? In people's homes, you know, understand that a lot of times when women get ard, it's usually by a close acquaintance or somebody that they know. It's not like some stranger in a bush. That's very rare that some random man will grab you out of the bushes and throw you down and do that. It's usually an acquaintance. It's usually somebody that you know, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's really unfortunate that so many women have been through this. It's really sad. And I'm glad that people are speaking out about this more and more. So let me go ahead and read some of these super chats here. Um, Chanel Ray sent $49.99. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. She says, T, it's Taylor. Traces BFF. Glad to be back in here. You look amazing. Amelie's come in. YouTube forces can't stop. God's blessing. Thank you so much, Taylor. I appreciate you. Um, I'm having a New Year's Eve, you know what I'm saying, get together. So I hope you guys can come through. Um, but I will get you more details. It was so good to kick it with you on my birthday like a year and a half ago. So thank you. And I think somebody told me that we're like 15,000 people away from a million subscribers. So hopefully we'll get there this year because I'm telling y'all, if I hit a million subscribers, I'm throwing a big dumbass party. Y'all already know it. I'm throwing a big ass party and we're going to turn up and we're going to have a good time. So thank you so much, sis. I appreciate the super chat. Thank you for coming through. Um, let me see here. APS sent $179. Um, I'm assuming in Asian money. Thank you so much. Uh, they said, I can't wait to see you reach a million subscribers. You deserve it. Love and support from Bangkok, Thailand. Wow. Thank you so much. I appreciate you tapping in from Bangkok. Um, thank you for the love and support. And yes, we will get to a million dollars. I said a million dollars. A million subscribers, not a million dollars. Well, hell, we might get to that too. We're going to claim that in the name of Jesus, okay? But we will definitely get to a million subscribers in 2024. I just know it. Like I said, for me... I'm all about integrity and I want my subscribers to be real. I'm not buying subscribers. I'm not buying shit to be in a race with other YouTubers. When it comes, it comes. It's going to be authentic and genuine. You know what I'm saying? I'm not doing what some of these other people do to pull stunts. So when you see that we're at a million, we're legit at a million. Okay? It's not because I ran and bought a bunch of subscribers. So I can't wait. You know what I mean? Like I said, once I get there, I'm throwing a huge party. And I want my subscribers to be there to celebrate with me. So thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you. Um, let me see here. Young Kobe. What's up, Young Kobe? He sent $5. Um, he says, I don't know about this one, y'all. Jamie likes women that looks like Dawson's Creek. I don't want to wait for our lives to be over. You are such a mess. Did they say what the woman looked like, though? Did they say it was a black woman, a white woman? I don't think they named or said the woman's ethnicity, but it's going to be very interesting to see. You know, it's a lot going on in these streets with these celebrities. And I just hope that people know, like, you really shouldn't be worshiping anybody because you just don't know how things get down behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? So thank you for the super chat. Um, let's see here. Uh, Munina Nicole, I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. She says, T, you look beautiful, African queen. Thank you for everything you do. Hit the like button, y'all. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, sis. Yes, please hit the like button. We got over 8,000 people in here. If you guys are sipping slow, please hit that like button. It is free. So thank you, sis. I appreciate that. Um, let's see here. Uh, Lorraine S. says, I'm enjoying your deep dives. Thank you so much. 
Yes, if you guys have nothing to do, if you guys are prepping, definitely watch the deep dives. Um, my latest one, it dropped, I think like a week and a half ago. It's about the conflict in Israel and Gaza. And and shout out to like all the people who commented like on the video and stuff on, on Venmo. I appreciate just reading the comments and the ones that I saw um, on Patreon and in Discord. Um, thank you to like the Israeli people and the Palestinian tea sippers who were commenting and telling me that they appreciated me being fair. So I, I really am grateful for that because I was really trying to show it from both angles and I didn't want to like lean one way or another because again, it's not really my conflict. It's y'all's and I don't want to speak like I just know everything, you know, like that's going on, you know, like historically, you know, race wise and stuff. So I really appreciate like the the Israeli people who said that they like my documentary and that that I was fair in it and that they feel bad for the people in Gaza. And I also appreciate the Palestinian people who also left me comments. So thank you. That just makes me feel so much better because I was so nervous to make the deep dive, you know, when you're talking about very sensitive topics like that. But I really wanted to show that, you know, the Israeli soldiers are going through it too and they're losing their lives too and a lot of them are fighting in a war that they don't want to fight in you know they don't want to be bothered with that these are young people who are losing their lives and having to go and do things and fight in a war for older people who are playing puppet master you know so I don't know. I just want peace. I just want peace all over. I want peace here in America. I want peace globally. I just, I feel like I want everything to go back to like 2018. I feel like that's when like everything was okay. I feel like everything now has just been stressful. We don't know what's going to happen next with war, gas is going up, food. I mean, this is probably the most expensive Thanksgiving that we've had. Like just buying stuff. It's like, damn, almost two, $300 and your cart still looks empty. I mean, it's insane. So I just wish things would just go back to normal, you know, but thank you to everybody who supports my deep dives. It means a lot to me because they take a lot of work to put together. So thank you so much for that super chat. Um, let me see here. Uh, J Love sent 199 says, happy Thanksgiving tea from NYC. How you doing? Thank you, J Love. I appreciate you and happy Thanksgiving to you as well. Um, it's nine. Okay, cool. So I've been out here for an hour and 12 minutes. So let me finish these last few. Cause like I said, I want to get off of here. Cause it seems like when we hit the two minute mark, it starts to act crazy. Um, so this other person is being sued too. This just came out today. Like this is insane. Everybody's getting sued because again, the statute of limitations is over in New York on the 24th. So this is who else is being sued right now. Let me share this tab here. Bam, y'all know who that is? He look really old and he's missing a hat and glasses. Jimmy Iovine, he is being sued as well. So we're gonna go ahead and read this. I don't know anything about the case. We're reading this together. Cause like I said, I came home and everybody was being sued. So, oh my gosh, come on Rolling Stone. I gotta subscribe, hold on. Let me, let me look up another person. Well, I don't have to subscribe. I'm paying for like, another, it's like I'm paying for so many subscriptions, it's ridiculous. I thought I was paying for theirs, but I guess not. Okay, Yahoo has it. Hopefully Yahoo doesn't have a paywall. Okay, cool, Yahoo doesn't. Okay, so Jimmy Iovine, all right. A woman is filing a lawsuit against music executive Jimmy Iovine, alleging that the Interscope's record co-founder allegedly sexual, well, sexually abused her and forcibly touched her, according to court documents. Um, Ivan tells Rolling Stone that he's shocked and baffled by the claim. Oh, okay, so he's, at least he's put out a statement. Uh, the Jane Doe plaintiff filed a summons notice on Wednesday in New York, okay? Nutty New York. Once again, the statute of limitations alleges that Ivan, who is now 70, engaged in multiple instances of sexual abuse and forcible touching of her, including a specific incident of sexual misconduct that occurred in New York City in August of 2007. The legal filing contained little additional information regarding the woman's specific claims, but a lawsuit 
is expected by the end of the year. The woman also alleges that she faced sexual harassment and retaliation and is seeking an unspecified amount of damages. Doe's attorney, Douglas, ooh, Wigdor, uh-oh, declined to comment further on this case. Now, if y'all remember, y'all remember who um, Mr. Wigdor is, that is the high-powered attorney that Cassie hired against Diddy. He's also the attorney that took down Harvey Weinstein. So if she is hiring Mr. Wigdor, ooh wee, he about to cut a check. She about to get some of that Beats money, literally. It's going to be very interesting who else. Like, I feel like that meme, who's next? You know what I mean? How them kids be dancing and shit? Who is next in the entertainment industry? And how come Trey Song's lawsuits don't stick? Like, when's he finally going to go down for something? Like, every other month he gets sued for some type of sexual abuse, but it seems like they're not sticking. But I'm really interested to see who's next. Cuba Gooding Jr., I think he settled his case already. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's trying to get some of that Beats money. A straight up mess. So now before I go, I want to make sure I touched on everything here. Okay. So one thing, I saw this today on The Shade Room. And I'm trying to figure out who Remy Ma is talking about. Is she talking to Papoose? Because we've been speculating for months that... You know, they're not together. Supposedly, she cheated on Papoose with some young-ass battle rapper. Um, but she wrote this today. You know, usually Remy Ma keeps it cute. You know what I'm saying? She hasn't been involved in no drama. But she says, you shitted on me and I still never exposed you. I know your secrets. Wait, I know secrets about people I don't fuck with anymore. And their secrets will never leave my mouth. My character will never be questioned. But it's cool, though. Who is she talking about? Now, somebody says, after I heard she cheated on Papoose, she can't say nothing of value to me anymore. <laughs> so a lot of people are not feeling her. They're saying she cheated on Pop with a nigga who's still trying to find a music career at almost 40. <laughs> the shady ass shade room, honey. Somebody else says, I still can't forgive her for cheating on Pop. It rained for 40 days and nights in NYC. Oh, my goodness. Mm-mm-mm. Somebody else says, so those secrets make it okay for you to be gallivating and gallivanting in public with a man you're supposed to be accused of cheating with, with on your husband has already knocked the fuck out. Ma'am, damn, secrets, y'all gave us hope. Go fix that or you should have kept your fears private like them secrets. So people are really hurt behind this whole Remy Ma and Papoose, you know, the whole black love thing. People are really in their feelings about this. So again, I don't know if she's talking to Papoose, I'm assuming so, but you know, I don't know. But the whole situation is just messy. So now before I go, I wanted to play this video that's going viral on social media. Um, Somebody says they heard it was about Hazel E. Why would she be beefing with Hazel E? Somebody said Remy didn't cheat. That's cap. I think something happened. I, you don't see Remy and Papoose together anymore. Like, I don't see them posting each other. So I definitely think something happened. What happened? I don't know, though. I'm not sure. They're saying that she cheated, but I don't know. So now let me go ahead and... um play out this video of this teacher. She went viral. We have posted it on Instagram. She's very upset at y'all, at some of y'all parents and how y'all are raising y'all's children. Um, she's going through it. So we're gonna go ahead and listen to her here. Let me share this tab real quick. Okay. They're throwing things at other people, other classmates. You say, can everybody sit in their spot? Let me start it over. Looks like she had already started talking. If you're a parent and your child is in 
pre-k to elementary school elementary school to high school i'm calling you out the children today i have never experienced and i'm i'm 22 having to teach and work with you guys as children has been the most traumatic experience of my life i teach five-year-olds ballet five-year-old girls ballet i have a class of 10 students they don't respect any authority you ask them can you stand in your designated spot they're telling you no and shut up they're throwing things at each other they're throwing things at other people other classmates you say can everybody sit in their spot i don't want to i'm not doing that you don't get to tell me what to do you're not my mom you confront the parent the parent tries to argue with you and fuss at you because you tried to reprimand and redirect their kid i told a young little girl please sit in your spot you're not my mom you don't tell me what to do okay when her mom came to pick her up i said hey your daughter's having a hard time following instructions and seven times today i've had to redirect her to just sit in her spot well clearly she didn't want to sit and mind you this is the mom clearly she didn't want to fucking sit right there so i mean if she's telling you she don't want to do something why keep asking her to do it you know she's not going to do it what world do we live in like what in you guys's brain as a parent says hmm my kid not following any directions is a, is a great thing it's not that serious and y'all don't have a right to tell her what to do it's sad it's sad it's really really sad and another thing that's heart-wrenching is horrifying it is horrifying your five-year-old daughters are asking to listen to pound town and ski ye your daughters your five-year-old daughters are asking can we hear pound town i'm playing them princess tiana ballet music and they are asking me can we hear pound I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And I'm so scared for these little girls today because this is the most insane, insane agenda push I have ever seen in my life. We do freeze dance. You guys' daughters are twerking at five. Five. Where's the parenting? Where's the boundaries? Where's the help? Y'all are not helping your kids. You're hurting them. You guys are hurting them. I come every day dressed, ready to go, and I'm in school too. I'm in college. I mean, I put bows in my hair. I'm wearing leotards. I, I'm trying to get them interested in, in like proper things for their age, and you guys are exposing your kids to this raunchy secular music why is you guys this five-year-old's daughter singing pound town i'm calling out all, all right child let me go ahead and come back <laughs> not her being all dramatic I, I mean i get like her feelings are hurt but i am i the only person who didn't see a tear i didn't you know she like I didn't see it here, but okay, I do agree with her though. She's speaking facts. Yeah, I think she's being a bit over dramatic, but she is speaking facts. A lot of these parents have dropped the ball, um, but a lot of teachers had me cracking up too. They're like, "Girl, you're 22. Y'all were just as off the chain when you were that young too." But um, I have noticed a lot of the teachers are getting younger and younger, because um, a lot of the older teachers they're done. They're not dealing with these kids. The disrespect you know, the fighting. So a lot of the teachers that are now teaching in schools are literally in their 20s. They're teaching kids that are literally just a few years, you know, younger than them. But she's she's working with five-year-olds and I agree with her and it is really sad and I can understand that being frustrating when you don't even have backup from the parents, when the parents think that this is okay. Um, I remember watching a video not too long ago of all these teachers in the classroom with kindergartners and the kindergartners are all singing, ski -hee! And I'm like, like, why? Like, why is that song being played? Why do these kids know this song? Like, I get, you know, it's it's a viral thing right now to be like, ski, -hee! 
But it's like, why are the teachers even engaging in that? And then post on social media like it's cute for your kindergarten class to be running around saying that. Now, Sexy Red did respond to her. And of course, you know, she responded in the in the way that I just knew she would respond. You know, just ratchet. So this is what Sexy Red had to say about the crying teacher. <laughs> crying teacher. <laughs> so Sexy Red, you know, big and pregnant, that's her. She says, I'm going to make some kids bop songs for y'all. So that's what she wrote. She's going to make kid bop songs. And then she ended up deleting that tweet, supposedly. So I just think, you know, at this point in time, you know, you just got to raise your kids the best way that you know how to raise them. But it is unfortunate. Um, we did a call-in show a few months ago for all the teachers to call in and air their grievances. And we came to the conclusion that in a minute, y'all's kids are going to be taught by AI. If y'all don't start doing better and raising y'all's kids better and stop stressing out these teachers, it's going to be AI teachers teaching the kids because people are quitting the, the teaching profession continuously. You know, it's hard to get new teachers in to like teach these kids because a lot of them are off the chain. And again, you can't even blame the children. You got to blame the, the parents because the parents set the tone in the household. So if the parents are allowing the kids to be disrespectful and talk any type of way, they're going to mimic that outside to the rest of the world as well. So, you know, I feel bad for her. She's definitely overwhelmed. She's definitely stressed out, you know, but until the parents decide to get on board and be, you know, to help her out and be a force next to her to check their kids if they're being disrespectful, she's basically you know, having to do this by herself if she doesn't have the backing from the parents, which is really frustrating because she's only 22 years old. So the whole situation is really sad. I'm going to go ahead and read these last few super chats. Um, I know it's getting late. It's 930 already. I had to start prepping. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get ready to jump off of here. Um, let's see here. Brown skin shorty sent 499 says, love you T. I love your commentary. You always keep it a thousand. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thanks for coming through. Uh, let's see here. And then I got married says, Hey auntie, just hear me out on discord. Did you see where Tamar and Tommy had a back and forth on Beyonce's internet? Happy Thanksgiving. No, I have not seen that yet. I've been kind of running around all day. Um, I'm assuming it's in the celebrity chat room, so I'll look for it after the stream. So thank you so much. I didn't know they got, got into it. Um, let's see here. Keisha in love says, happy Thanksgiving tea. Looking beautiful as always. Everyone be safe tomorrow. Love y'all. God bless. We love you too. Thank you so much for coming through, sis. Thank you and happy Thanksgiving. Um, Urban Angel sent $150 says, ooh, child, all these lawsuits, honey. But you know what? In my deep, lovely T voice, I'm here for it, bitch. Yes. Again, you know, I'm here for victims getting their justice. So we're going to have to wait and see how it plays out. Because remember, <laughs> when when Cassie's lawsuit first hit the internet, Papa Diddy and his lawyers, they were screaming that he was, you know, this was a shakedown. He was innocent. He didn't do anything wrong. And in less than 24 hours, this fool settled. So I wonder if a lot more people are going to end up settling. It's going to be very interesting, especially that Jimmy Iovine case. That's going to be real interesting as well. Um, let's see here. Bri Brianna, your mama spells your name very different. I've never seen it spelled like that. It's pretty. I've just never seen it spelled like Brianna. She sent a dollar ninety nine. Says it's my twenty first birthday. Any advice? I've been watching you since I was seventeen. Wow, so you are twenty one. Best advice that I can give to people in their twenties is start while you're young. Whatever you want to do, y'all have access to everything. You have access to stuff that we didn't have access to when I was twenty one. The internet is your oyster. You know what I'm saying? Really focus on your credit, stacking up your money. If you want to start a business, start doing all this stuff now in your 20s. Set yourself up now in your 20s. Work hard in your 20s. So then by the time you get to your 30s and 40s, you're just coasting through life. You know what I'm saying? You'll probably be able to retire by the time you're like 35. You know what I'm saying? So instead of like fucking around in your 20s, 
you know, have fun, you know what I'm saying, party, kick it, experience stuff. I'm not saying that. But instead of just sitting around, just getting high every day, getting drunk every day, just partying every day, you know what I'm saying? Limit the partying to maybe once or twice a month, okay? Not every weekend. And really focus on building your financial knowledge, um, your credit, you know what I'm saying? Starting a business. And even if you don't want to start a business and be an entrepreneur because that's not for everybody, work hard and really stack your money. Even if you get a nine to five, if you get paid $100, Put aside 25% of that. You know what I'm saying? Put it away for a rainy day, a nest egg, and don't touch it. And watch how that money builds up. So these are just some of the things that I wish I knew when I was turning 21. But, you know, you live and learn. But that's the advice I would give to you and anybody turning, you know, 21 or in their early 20s. Is to start whatever you want to do. Start it now. Don't feel like, oh, I can't start you know, doing this and that until I'm 25 or I got, you know, a few more years. Tomorrow's not promised. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. So whatever you want to start, start it now when you're young and you have the energy and you got, you know, good knees and a strong back. Um, <laughs> okay, do all that stuff now, you know what I mean? And then by the time you're older, you have a nest egg and you're good, you know? So like really cherish your youth because you only have it for so long, you know, and, and don't get too caught up um, in social media and in what people think about you. You know, it's very easy to get caught up in that when you're young, but once you get to a certain age, those people don't even matter. Like I could care less what people think about me. It's just, it is what it is, that's your opinion, you know? So focus on what you think about you when you look in the mirror. So thank you so much for the super chat and happy birthday to you. Yes, man. I hope that was some good advice. Let's see here. Uh, Sydney, Chris sent 1999 says, Happy Thanksgiving, T. This is my first super chat. I've been watching you for about 10 years. I'm thankful for all the funny videos and great advice that you give. Thank you for being an amazing influencer. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, shout out to you for your first super chat. I really appreciate it. And just thank you for your words. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, I never knew I'd be doing this. And sometimes I feel like, should I still be coming down here and doing commentary? Like, you know, are people like tired of my opinion after all these years? And it makes me feel good that, you know, like people still rock with me and have been here for so long. And that's why I feel like my fans are not just my fans. Like you guys are like family, you know what I mean? And so I, I really appreciate the fact that y'all really support me and go hard for me and y'all just never wavered even when you know chicken heads were you know trying to fuck with me and, and be messy and you know on some stupid shit y'all saw through the bullshit and now we see you know how karma plays you know what i'm saying god don't play about me and i'm just grateful for everybody who just stood next to me and you know like just really wrapped their arms around me and and just made sure i was good mentally you know what i'm saying because the internet is a very ugly fucking place so I appreciate my tea sippers more than anything. That's why it's like I rock hard for y'all. I go hard for y'all. When I throw events, I put my all into my events. You know what I'm saying? I want it to be an experience for y'all. I give y'all celebrity treatment. You know what I'm saying? Don't know other influencer do that shit. You know, they might pop up at their event. They're usually late. They might take a few pictures and then they're out. You know what I mean? Like I will run out a whole club for my tea sippers and we will party the whole fucking night. You know what I mean? So I go hard for y'all because y'all go hard for me. And you, you can't pay for that type of loyalty or support. So it means a lot to me. And I'm going to keep doing this till the wheels fall off. You know what I'm saying? So like I told y'all last week, God is not done with me yet. I'm still here. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep, you know, trugging along and, um, you know, giving my opinions and just standing in my truth. Because at the end of the day, you know, the truth doesn't waver. Even when it wasn't popular and I was calling out Diddy when it wasn't popular and I was being attacked. Now everybody sees you know, everything I've been saying for the past, you know, 10 years about him, why I didn't like him, people are seeing it now. And it feels good to be validated, you know, to have like so many people in the shade room liking my comment and people tagging me and stuff like that. It feels good to be validated. So like I always tell y'all, you know, do the right thing, treat people right. You never know who people will be in the future. You know, that same person that you think, you know, you know, is quote unquote beneath you you don't know where they're going to be four or five years from now. So treat people how you want to be treated. You know what I'm saying? Understand the same folks you see on your way up are the same people you'll see on your way down. So treat people right because karma is real. You know what I mean? People try and do little sneak stuff on the internet and, 
you know, make up competitions in their head and we see where that gets people. So do the right thing, you know, so I really appreciate y'all so much. So, man, y'all gonna get me emotional here. Ah, there I go. I'm freezing again. I'm freezing. It's something about once I go a certain amount of hours. So on that note, y'all, thank you guys for the super chats. Um, yeah, I'm frozen. Okay, can y'all see me and hear me? All right. I don't know what happened. Like I said, it seems like once we go past like an hour and a half, I don't know if it's some type of glitch that YouTube is having, but it keeps doing it. So I apologize for that. I've talked to my YouTube manager. They're trying to figure it out. So, you know, you know how that works. They be trying to figure shit out. It'd be like six months later, like we figured it out. But um, I want to pop back on here and just, you know, really thank you guys um really for like the support for the super chats for coming through and spending pre thanksgiving with me i really appreciate it um let me read these last two super chats i'm gonna go ahead and lock off uh boss trizzy sent five says i'm 35 my mom don't play for teacher called my home my mom came and got me and took me home and met me with the belt and take me right back oh yeah you know, our old school parents didn't play that. You didn't disrespect your teachers. But, okay, it's freezing up again, so I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. Um, the Miss, thank you for the $10 super chat as well. I appreciate you. Everybody, have a happy Thanksgiving with your family. Um, be safe. Enjoy. And I will see you guys later on this week. Um, you know, I'll have more videos and stuff like that. But have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Make sure y'all hit the like button. Also, the link will be down below for the Ugly Christmas uh, sweaters. You guys can pre-order those. So um, just click the link. It'll take you straight there. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Tales of Dre in 49 says, thanks for the advice, T. I turned 21 back in March, but it's a sign for me to choose what matters. Hold on. It disappeared. For me to choose what matters most in life right now. Amen. Well, happy um, belated birthday to you. And thank you so much. So, all right, you guys, I'm out of here. Everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.